Well, let's get to China now. It's doubtful about a long-term trade deal with the U.S., despite coming close to signing a phase one agreement. According to reports, Chinese officials remain concerned about President Donald Trump's, quote, impulsive nature and the risk that he may back out. Here to weigh in, Frank Richter. He's the founder and chairman of the Global Visions community, Horasis. He is also the former director of the World Economic Forum. Thank you so much for being here. Our own Akiko Fujita is also with us on set. Um, so, Frank, as we watch this sort of back and forth rhetorically between the U.S. and China, do you think there is a real prospect of a real deal of a significant long-term agreement? There's definitely hope. We just hosted the Horasis China meeting in Las Vegas with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the China Federation of Industrial Economics, the main Chinese industry body. In both China and America, is hopeful, at least at our summit. The uh, Chinese ambassador attended with also two U.S. governors. And I think everybody knows that uh, a trade war is a tit for tat. It's a zero sum game. There has to be a conclusion, there has to be an agreement. Everybody agrees. And um, of course, uh, multinationals uh, hope for a deal. Phase one, you mentioned. I think um, it will be um, signed pretty soon, not at the APEC summit, because um, this one is postponed. But uh, there might be actually a presidential summit between Xi Jinping and President President Trump um, anytime soon. And um, the really tricky thing is phase two. Phase one is only agriculture. We see um, possible ways um, to collaborate here. Of course, China needs American agricultural products like soybeans and uh, beef and pork. But in phase two, we talk about um, IP, we talk about um, FDI climate. Those are really the tough issues. But yes, there's hope. And um, I think we, we all need to get over this trade war. Yeah, Frank, I think it's interesting you mentioned that there is hope on that phase one trade deal. We don't know where that's going to be signed. But you also said in your conversations with Chinese officials that they know that they have to change on the IP issue, opening up the markets, but they want to do it on their own timeline. Um, what is the expectation on their front as they see their economic growth start to decelerate? Is there a renewed urgency, you think, to come to the table and maybe speed up the timeline they wanted to go with? I agree. You know, the, the Chinese side know that they have to um, open up the economy uh, reforms, and uh, reforms are coming in. Uh, but uh, they don't want to play according to somebody else's um, pressure. And uh, that's a bit of a, a Chinese issue, it's all, you know, the, like the, the phase issue. Mm -hmm. uh, they are um, opening up, um, but uh, they ask for more time. Uh, they know they have to work on IP, and many Chinese companies actually start to sue each other because of IP issues. And it's a very good signal mm. uh, that uh, the Chinese understand that um, all economic exchange is based on intellectual property. Uh, so they know that uh, environment, a second issue. The Chinese now are almost like the, the avant-garde when it comes to um, green growth. Um, think about electric cars, where China is taking a lead. Mm -hmm. um, and then FDI uh, investment um, conditions here again. You know, they know that uh, if foreign multinationals um, stop to invest, the Chinese uh, economy will be hurt. Right. So um, I think they do everything to keep the investment and to, to improve the investment climate. I just wanted to mention on that front, uh, there's an interesting security review that is now uh, going to be happening. According to Reuters, the owner of TikTok, that popular video social media company, um, its owner is Beijing ByteDance Technology, which is buying uh, music.ly for a billion dollars. And again, Reuters is reporting that the U.S. government has launched a national security review into that acquisition, that being conducted by CFIUS, uh, which is the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. So at the same time that we're having these high-level sort of economic discussions, you're also having, in the case of Huawei, in the case of, you know, reviews like this, company-level mm. scrutiny that has been increasing. Do, do those two seem to go hand in hand, right? So when you get an agreement on the, the big macro stuff, will you also see an alleviation on this level. Yeah, I agree. It's not only trade. Um, uh, of course, uh, the issues of um, Huawei, uh, we all know. And um, when it comes to digital espionage and, and other things. Um, and um, I think, you know, if you think about the, the, the grand picture, America is concerned about China's rise. Uh, they think that China will challenge uh, the US and uh, China will anytime soon be the number one economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, America, especially President Trump, is trying to do anything, uh, everything to, to kind of keep uh, China down 
down. And uh, it starts with those kind of reviews um, targeted towards uh, some companies. Um, and it might go further. You know, there are also political, there are also geopolitical issues. So the, the China-US relationship is maybe the single most important um, relationship uh, of this century. And uh, we have to closely watch it. All right, unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Thank you for coming. Thank you so and Frank much. Frank Richter is founder and chairman of Horasis. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kiko.